All right, today, super excited. We have our brand new power-driven ported 6.7 liter Cummins cylinder head on the flow bench. Now this head also works on 5.9 Cummins, basically anything 24 valve, this is the head for you. Um, we're on the Superflow 1020 flow bench. For a lot of you guys that don't know, a Superflow flow bench is basically a big industrial vacuum cleaner. It pulls about 60 or 70 amps out of the wall. It's got a bunch of big motors that spool up and it can either blow air out or suck air in. What we have is this fancy uh, valve hold open apparatus here. It lets us hold the valve at different lifts. Generally, you go in hundred thousandths increments. It lets us pull 28 inches, uh, that's where we're set on this, 28 inches of water vacuum, which simulates about a one PSI pressure drop. So think of it as like putting one pound of boost or one pound of vacuum on the head and we flow through it and it gives you a good representation of what the head flows. Got some stock head flow numbers here. Let's see how this new head does on the flow bench. At the end, we'll tell you a couple little highlights about what's so awesome on the bench, but um, hang on, it's gonna get noisy. So I'm going to open the valve a hundred thousandths. Set up straight here. Zeroed. Okay, I'm going to put my earmuffs on because it's kind of loud, but um, we're doing the intake, so it's uh, sucking in. We do have an injector stuffed in there. Uh, if you test without an injector, the injector hole plug throws off your numbers, you know, 8, 10, maybe even 15 CFM. Um, but uh, this is all legit. Now we're at 200 lift. Um, this is just setting up to a bigger orifice. Essentially, it can't accurately measure more than 100 CFM. And um, below, at 100 lift, we're below 100. Now that we're over 200, it's gonna be over 100 CFM. So we're all set. All right, we're at 300 lift. We're already beating the stock head by 20 CFM, which is pretty good. So, really excited to see where this head ends up. Now for 400 lift, we had to go up another range on the flow bench. All right guys, so super impressive numbers. At 600, this head ended up at 219 CFM. Um, the stock head we flowed earlier, flowed 171. So 29, 39, 40, 48 CFM at 600 lifts. Big flow difference here on the intake. The other thing you gotta realize, this still has a factory intake shelf. So we can only port basically in the bowl what we can reach with uh, you know, with the CNC porting stuff with the Rottler. Um, so, like I said, solid gain. Um, now we're gonna move over to the exhaust side. I'm gonna program this over to exhaust. Now it's gonna blow uh, exhaust out. I gotta move the little test setup over. All right, we're all set up on the exhaust side. I moved the valve bridge over, so now we're uh, doing the exhaust. I got the machine set on exhaust setting and uh, let's see what she does. 100 lift. All right, we are on range three, which only reads accurately to about 96, 95 CFM. It's over 95, so give me a little arrow saying go up a range, now we're on range five um, for 200 lift. Let's see where it ends up.
Wow, this thing really took off at 300. Um, we're over the 195 CFM it can read on range five, so we go up to range six. Um, essentially, it's just internally, it's moving plates to open up uh, orifice sizes and stuff to make it, uh, basically it's trying to hit a range of vacuum so it can run across the sensors and uh, too much flow, which is a good thing. All right, guys, numbers are in. This is exciting. We picked up 50 CFM of flow on the exhaust side. This thing peaked out at 230 CFM at 600 lift, where the stock had only flowed 178. Uh, the intake, we peaked out at 219 versus 171 for the stock head, which is a gain of 48 CFM. This is a an affordable, budget-conscious CNC port job. It's not Nobody's in their hand blending, making this stuff all perfect. This is something that port to port, very consistent job, very consistent production. And guys, this head's legit. Uh, Josh ran this at the Alltrek Challenge in uh, 2021, made over 2000 horsepower on this exact port job, same cylinder head. Todd has one of these in his mega cab that he tows with, makes 1400 horsepower. This is a legit head. The reason we can run this on the race trucks and we know it's good for the street trucks, the port job's mild enough that we're not sacrificing reliability, getting the exhaust really thin where you're gonna hit water, but also the big problem with these trucks is they'll drop valve seats. Even stock trucks, if you tow them heavy long-term, they're prone to dropping a valve seat eventually, ruining your engine. These heads, they start off as a new aftermarket casting. We go and we put oversized valve seats in and press them in with double the press of what a factory Cummins head has. These seats are not gonna drop out. Then another problem that guys have is the, um, there's little freeze plugs under the valve cover here. That happened to Josh on one of his trucks. We see it all the time on customer trucks. If you're towing heavy, working these trucks, these freeze plugs can pop out. So this is drilled and tapped for thread and freeze plugs. So the two main, or the three main upgrades, thread and freeze plugs, so you're not gonna get coolant under there. Ported, the super oversized valve seats, factory size valves. That's the other reason these heads work so great on stock and race applications. The coefficient of discharge on these exhaust ports and intake ports is incredible. We're keeping the factory swirl, all the stuff the factory put in this head, we've just enhanced it with a port job. We don't have an oversized valve of unknown material that's hard to get, and frankly, it adds a lot of expense to a head. We didn't want an oversized valve, we wanted a stock size valve for this head, and we wanted it to flow, and it delivered the goods, for real. So, go head on over to PowerDrivenDiesel.com these heads are generally in stock on the sh shelf, ready to ship out. These things are awesome.